Good morning. My name is Father Rayapa and I'm from the Diocese of Vello, India. Today I'm going to talk about Laudato Si. I'm going to read uh, para, paragraph number 35 from the first chapter. Uh, Pope is writing about the loss of biodiversity and uh, he points out the uh, human activity which is not benefiting to the betterment of the natural world. Actually human activity has been seen always in conflict with the nature. So the pontiff is writing beautifully in the paragraph number 35 and I, I'm going to compare also Asuka the great 2000 250 years ago, uh, he was inscribing Dhamma messages on rock and pillar edicts, uh, talking about the preservation of the natural world. Actually, I'm going to talk about the seventh major pillar edict. Uh, Asoka is writing beautifully and uh, the creation of roads and creation of hospitals, creation of uh, uh, forests um, and he was creating natural wealth, biological wealth for the future generations. So in the same line Pope Francis is also asking the world community to preserve, to conserve and help the natural world, especially the animals because habitat destruction is the biggest disaster happened on the planet. Habitat destruction means for human interest we destroy forests, the, the home or habitats of the animals and they become ecological refugees. So Pope is asking a biological corridor which means the animals can live and migrate even in urban areas. So we need to create a patch of land full of trees, the wilderness area, where animals can freely roam from one section of the forest to another section of the forest. Because migration is a very important element in the uh, biological life on earth. So let me read first uh, paragraph number 35 from Laudato Si. Pope Francis writes as follows. In assessing the environmental impact of any project, concern is usually shown for its effects on soil, water and air, yet few careful studies are made of its impact on biodiversity, as if the loss of species or animals and plant groups were of little importance. Highways, new plantations, the fencing off of certain areas, the damming of the water resources, and similar developments crowd out natural habitats and at times break them up in such a way that animal populations can no longer migrate or roam freely. As a result, some species face extinction. Alternatives exist which at least lessen the impact of these projects, like the creation of biological corridors. But few countries demonstrate such concern and foresight. Frequently, when certain species are exploited commercially, when certain species are exploited commercially, little attention is paid to studying their reproductive patterns in order to prevent their depletion and the consequent imbalance of the ecosystem. Pope is simply asking, before you start any project, Maybe you're building a church, or you're building a school, or you're building a factory, or you're building a road, or a parking lot. You need to assess the impact, what it's going to have in the future. So when we try to destroy an animal habitat, we need to ask so many questions. So when you answer them in a sustainable way, then you proceed. When it is unsustainable, Quit it. Quit it. You should never ever do it. 
The pontiff is suggesting the creation of biological corridors. What is the biological corridors? I'm going to show you in the computer right here. Look at that. You see, this is a forest in which animals can go from here to there. They freely migrated. When the food is no food and water, they could go here, gather food and water. And when no food, water, and they can gather, see freely they can move and roam um, in the ecosystem. But see humans, now they uh, destroyed the habitat and you see the fragmentation. So here there is no forest. So now it's fragmented. These animals can never migrate here. These animals can never migrate there. So now Pope is asking to create a biological corridor. See the biological corridor? Now Pope is telling in urban areas, we need to build this patch of land with the forest where now animals can also migrate at the same time humans also can live peacefully so this is called the creation of biological corridors pope is very intelligent and this is a beautiful beautiful strategy we need to always create a habitat for other creatures that is why we are created. So you please read Laudato Si, paragraph number 35, then you will understand better. So now I am turning to Asoka, 2250 years ago. Asoka created biological corridors. <laughs> he went further than that. Can you imagine? That is 250 years before Christ. He did everything. He created biological world. He preserved natural world. Asoka thought the uh, creation of biological wealth is the best investment he could do for the future generations. So preserving a mountain or a preserving a pond or preserving a small animal or a plant is the best investment for the future generations. It is not the creation of material wealth, cultural wealth. Both of them will be destroyed anyway, but biological wealth can never be destroyed. Only God can create the mountains, so you preserve them for the future generations. And Asoka is promoting biological wealth in his Mauryan Empire. He dug wells for water, he planted trees, grows, and he built hospitals, and he built roads. So the harvest, rain harvest system was well in place 2,250 years ago. So I'm going to read from the book Asoka's Dharma, uh, Jesus Christ Kingdom of God. You will go to the page number 175. It talks about the seventh pillar edict in which Asoka writes as follows. His name, Asoka's name is Piyadasi. Okay. Thus speaks the beloved of the gods, King Piyadasi. On the roads, I have had banyan trees planted, which will give shade to beasts and men. I have had mango groves planted, and I have had wells dug and rest houses built at every eight kilometers. And I have had many watering places made everywhere for the use of beasts and men. But this benefit is important and indeed the world has enjoyed attention in many ways from former kings as well as from me. But I have done these things in order that my people might conform to Dhamma. Masoka is so brilliant. He uses the word, the expression beast and men. He gives importance, the priority, beast and men. So you see, his priority is on creatures and then comes humans. So he is repeating three times in the seventh pillar edict. He has created everything for beasts and men. He dug wells for beasts and men. He planted trees for beasts and men. He built hospitals for beasts and men. See his compassion and mercy. He was a comforting. So I think it's beautiful. Asoka has done it. And um, today we need to read Asoka and read his edicts. And um, we have incorporated his lion capital 
um, in our government, even in the bank notes, we see the Lion Capital and Asoka's artifacts. We included even the national flag, a lot of things, uh, Asoka's artifacts. But instead of doing that, why can't we integrate his teachings? That, they are most important. We don't seem to respect his teachings, only his artifacts like Lion Capital or Chakra or those kind of uh, uh, the stupas. No, we need to incorporate the bioethics, the Dhamma teachings of Asoka. Uh, if you do that, humans can benefit and also nature can benefit. So thank you and God bless and have a nice day.